Hi, this is Martin Kidman, Product Manager for Safety Solutions at SICK UK. In this short video, I'd like to demonstrate how you can construct a simple application using Safety Designer for our Flexi Compact device. The Flexi Compact is our safety controller standalone, which comes with a number of I.O. on board, which you can add to with additional modules. It sits in between our Flexi Classic relay which is pot switch programmable and our flexi soft which is our fully modular system which has the capability of safe networking and also the facility for analog inputs and also encoder inputs safety designer is our software at sick it's a free software package which you can download at sick.com and this allows you to configure and program a number of SICK devices. So when you open the software, you're presented with this page. And if you go to New Project, this will then take you to another page where you can see the different types of devices that you can drag into your configuration area. At the top, we have our Flexi Compact. You simply drag the device into the main working area and then this creates a virtual setup which you can start to design and configure and enable logic. There are two variants available for the Flexi Compact, the standard unit or the unit with the Modbus TCP connection on front. If we just use the standard unit we can then start adding elements to our inputs and outputs and then start using them in our logic editor. There are other devices which you can see, such as our safety laser scanners, FlexiSoft, and also our two-dimensional LiDAR system, the ScanGrid. In a project, you always move from left to right, so this is an overview. Then we have our configuration. In here, we can add additional modules, such as extra safe I.O. or gateways. We can also add different elements to different outputs. Here we will consider a very simple machine with an e-stop circuit and three doors, each of which with an RFID safety switch on them. So you would also expect a reset and a start input as well as possibly two outputs to turn off and on two contactors. For the e-stops you can find under control devices where we'll add a dual channel e-stop with test pulses so when you drag them to the inputs which are the round blue circles if it has test pulses it will also occupy two of the standard outputs which are designated with X with test pulses if you want to know the duration and time periods of those you double click the icon and we can see we have a test period of 200 milliseconds with a test gap of 2 milliseconds for each channel of that e-stop the Q denotes the safe outputs now we want to add two non-contact RFID switches, which SICK provide in the STR1 series. So these are transponder safety switches, which will have OSSDs, which means that they don't require test pulses, and you can achieve Category 4 PLE with these individual devices. We may also want to add some outputs. So below inputs, we have output devices. So I will add a lamp for our reset button and I will also add a lamp for our start button and I will add two contactors as a dual channel output for the two contacts that we intend to switch with this circuit. I'll just go back to input devices because we actually need the reset and the start button. And what we'd normally like to see here as well is an external device monitoring input. This would be to monitor our contactors through the normally closed channel. This could also be uh, wired in series with the reset circuit. However, we're going to use a separate input for this input. So we've added our elements and now we'll move along to our logic editor. So on the right, we have all of our inputs, outputs and function blocks. All function blocks in the Flexi Compact are pre-certified to Category 4 PLE. However, you need to use them safely. So under our inputs, we can see the elements that we added previously. So if I drag these elements into the main working area, we can see, I added that one by mistake twice. We can see that we can use these bits in our logic in 
the logic editor. So we have our reset input, our start input, our external device monitoring input, and our e-stops and non-contact switches. You also have some additional uh, values such as a static 0 or 1 or first logic cycle if you're using things like RS flip-flops or any other complex functionality. If you expand these um, lists you can see that we have lots of functions such as AND and RESET functions so we want to AND or series up all of these four inputs together so if you double click the function block you can change the options so I'm going to change that AND block to four inputs and then you simply drag and drop the lines together and the function block turns yellow when you've successfully wired everything together to say that you've wired up correctly. So that's an AND function, so all of these have to be high in order for the output to go healthy. Under other we also have our reset function block and our restart function block. So the release is when we're allowed to actually activate this reset block and then all we'd need to do is wire up our reset input to the reset input and then we have a yellow block so that when the release goes high you press the reset and then we can enable the output. We'd also like to have a reset required flashing signal on the button so if we go to outputs we use one of the lamps and it might actually be uh, required to rename this for simplicity so double click the lamp or right click it and click rename and say reset required and this will rename the tag in the software. So our enable, actually we need to wire that to reset required, not ready for reset. So you can delete that line and redraw it and drag it up. Then the enable will go to the release of the restart button function block. And then we simply need to wire the start to the restart input like we did with the reset. Then we have the other lamp, which we may want to signify that a restart is required. So I've added that to the function block. If you want to move all of the logic, you can highlight all of it and move it around the page. And then finally, our enabling signal to the contactors. We would also want to have uh, some external device monitoring of those contactors. So we can have our feedback going into our EDM feedback and our enable to the control input. And then all we need to do finally is connect the motor contacts which are a dual channel bit to our enable output. If you want to test any logic uh, as part of your verification and validation process <laughs> in the software we have this simulation mode at the top so when you click this you can run in real time or step through in certain milliseconds and we can also bypass the EDM function if um, you think this may cause a problem because you can't click the EDM input at the same time as the enable going high so you can bypass that EDM function for, for testing purposes and then when you're running you can start to turn on and off devices so all the doors are shut the e-stop button is healthy the reset is required on the machine you press the reset you let it go this now enables the restart function block so a start is required you start the machine and the contactors go high. So you can fully test your uh, design without purchasing anything on this free software in a simulation. When you're happy with the circuit, uh, you can also create a report. And this report will give you a full bill of material, all of the configurations and also any wiring diagrams. And this can be saved in PDF format, which can be printed out and put into your technical file which will save checksums as well as firmware versions and also the configuration that you have put into your Flexi Compact. So I hope you found this useful. If you do have any questions, please put them in the comments below and enjoy programming your Flexi Compact. Thank you.
It should be noted that safety related application software according to ISO 13849 requires that the designer produces a comprehensive functional safety specification from which a safety requirement application software specification can be produced together with a method for verification and validation. Any examples or demonstrations provided by SIC cannot be considered validated or verified.